the most important wealth and the most important, um, uh, I would say, uh, investments you make is going to be in your books. Um, and and whatever you have that type of, in, like I've had a lot of inklings and I want to read certain books, but honestly, I... Hey everybody, we're back, we're back, and as I continue here my series, uh, my daily videos, and trying to really, uh, in a word, in a sense, talk to myself, and what would I have told myself uh, 10, 15 years ago, and uh, hopefully it, it resonates and connects with all my uh, Gen Xers, right, and uh, I'm a millennial, if you haven't known yet, I just found that out a couple of uh, months ago, um, with these terms where we're like, uh, naming generations in different age groups. So, as a millennial, uh, we've been all millennials that are watching this. Obviously, we have faced different sets of circumstances as our Gen Xers. And um, as my daughter was telling me today, we just have different ways of thinking, different ways of of viewing the world, and that's okay. Um, and one of the things that I realized so far is, you know, when it comes to like thinking about um, ourselves and how we can improve and and build, obviously, our own, as we talk about here, our own personal finances and wealth, is there's one thing that we forget and one thing I've noticed that has changed my, and has broadened my perspective and has opened me to opportunities that I've never otherwise wouldn't have, you know, have I had I not had access and really pushed myself to uh, purchase and seek out books, right? And and the wealth that is in books and and by wealth and investing investing we never really look at that you know you normally when you hear the word investing or when you hear the word wealth you think about obviously a lot of money material possessions right a lot of you know probably big mansions nice cars but we often never really uh think of like knowledge and how important what we have here uh, really dictates how we move along our lives and how we think and see things and how we act um, when it comes to certain opportunities or we face certain obstacles or certain challenges. And the reason I want to bring this up because I was watching over the weekend, I was watching a couple of movies I always log on and at night I can't go to bed, I watch some movies. And then for, for some reason I ran into on Amazon, I ran into a movie called Chirac by uh, director uh, Spike Lee. And his movies are always like... I like to watch some of his movies because his movies have so many subliminal messages in them. It's never really about the movie. Uh, and it's really current to what's going on today with all our social issues and obviously oppression and racism. And everything that's going on today, his movies are normally right on and has great messages to it that we can kind of pick up through the movie, right? In a way, he's giving us um, his advice or his insights on life through his movie uh, with the messages that are within the movies. And in the movie itself, there was a great line that I really want to share where, um, according to the lady and the, and the mother in the movie, she was talking about like how violence and, and the violence in the community in Chicago and that town and that city, how it's gotten so bad. And, and obviously not blaming themselves for it because they felt like their neighborhood had been uh, kind of forgotten by the government and by the local authorities, um, which was true because of their race and obviously minorities, they weren't really being taken care of. So she states, um, apparently a quote by Malcolm X, uh, he states that if you want to hide something from, um, he says, black people, anybody, I would say minorities, because I'm myself included, um, you put it in a book. And that was powerful because I honestly do believe that. I guess us millennials, at least for me, books weren't a thing. We never really, like I, I know we were, we didn't grow up in the age of, um, at least my experience, we didn't grow up in the age of social media like now, but uh, we didn't really seek out books. If anything, we were just mindlessly experiencing life. Uh, we learned it from the good, we learned from the bad. Uh, whether we got in trouble, uh, whether we didn't, 
we learned through those experiences, but we never really sought out books. We never really had the knowledge that there is out there. Nowadays, uh, we didn't have access to Google like we have now. Uh, there wasn't that much, um, I would say, free freedom of blogs and YouTube channels and experts and individuals giving out um, advice on certain parts of life that we would otherwise would have had in the beginning of our lives. So I realized that is so true. I mean, um, if we're just basing our lives on looking up, let's say, watching the news or watching TV or or friends and people, what they say around you, great. that You can get some great knowledge. But honestly, at the end of the day, if you want to find out, want to learn more about certain things, it's most of the time, majority of the time, uh, it's in books. Whether it's history, whether it's finance, whether it's... Um, uh, the Evolution of Human Species, which is a book that I'm reading right now called, uh, the name of the book? Sorry, Sapiens. <laughs> um, and, and, and you list and you realize the history of, of, of just uh, the whole, uh, human kind, right? And how we act and how we are. And then there's books on everything. Um, I have books on, I've, on the way the mind works, on marketing, on uh, what else I have, on living, you know, how to deal with stress. I have all these different books that I have access that I bought. And, and and you might not, like, practice it, but you pick up great nuggets and great insights and you kind of apply that with yourself whenever you're faced with situations or whenever you're dealing with something in your life. And the awesome part of that is that it wasn't a book. It wasn't like I had to go and seek somebody for this. So message of this video <laughs> is mo the most important wealth and the mo most important um uh i would say uh investments you make is going to be in your books um and and whatever you have that type of ink like i've had a lot of inkling that i want to read certain books but honestly I, if you have kids i have kids it's, it's fine it's hard to find time but uh the fact that we're able to Used 10 15 minutes a day, and I try to read a little bit of here and there, um, and access to the books. Uh, it makes us, I think, a lot more open minded, and that's why I want to want to get here. Like, the more you're able to open up your mind, the more you're able to access the wealth that you have. And then, the, the funny thing is, the biggest uh, asset you have, as that I've read a lot of gurus have said it, is yourself. Um, you know, you can. Uh, speculate and, and buy these stocks and, and invest in this and that and, and buy real estate and do all these things that I love and I do believe in that way. I feel like we should be uh, having you know some knowledge in that. But don't ever forget the most important and the most valuable asset is yourself. And as Warren Buffett, I heard him say not too long ago in an interview that he had a long couple of years ago, they asked him, what's the best investment? He goes, don't forget the best investment is yourself. Invest in yourself. And again, that is with either knowledge, whether it is uh, buying stuff for yourself that you might need for maybe some projects, uh, maybe it's education, maybe you want to learn about something, maybe you want to go back to school, take a course here and there. Um, always having the ability of learning too. So investing in learning um, and with a purpose, not just to, to like uh, brag about it, <laughs> with a purpose, whether it's something that interests you. Uh, I think going through school and going here, going up in the public school system, we didn't really have a choice of what we learned. We learned what the curriculum was, and it was already placed in front of us, and we just took whatever they gave us. And a lot of the courses, to be honest, I was not a big fan of. I didn't pay attention. To, I, would, I would say half the time in school. Um, the only thing that I really liked were math, and uh, I did composition and writing. And I think I was okay at writing, but math, I was actually good up until we got up to college. <laughs> but uh, we didn't have options like, oh, let's find out uh, the brief history of this culture or um, uh, my culture myself. Um, not even to my age now that I'm in my late 30s, well, mid 30s, mid 30s, uh, am I really interested about finding about my culture and about my, my parents' heritage and how they... Uh, how their country was ran and, and what kind of history they have and it's very very interesting because I get to understand my parents understand that their heritage and why they are the way they are and, and the things they've gone through and different uh, struggles they've gone through that I haven't had to gone to go through because we're in this country um, but 
you know, imagine if we would have done this, you know, when I was younger and, and taking courses on these things and learned about these things at a lot younger age, I probably would have a, a, a much more broader, broader spectrum of the world and, and just everything in life. So if you're young right now and you're watching this um, and you're just a Gen Xer, as they call them, um, understand that uh, what we invest is not really the, what matters. It's about the practice and about investing yourself. So it doesn't have to necessarily be in college. It could be on outside of college. College is only the part, short time of your life. What we do after after that and how we are after that is the most important thing. College is just, you're just like in the beginning phases of, of life. After that, you want to be just a constant learner of yourself, especially yourself. You want to learn who you are individually, but about the things around you um, and, and what interests you, right? What interests me might not interest you. Maybe you have, you don't care about, uh, uh, let's say, um, self-development or personal finances or anything. All you care about is fashion or cosmetics, whatever it may be. Great. L dive deep into that. You know, start your own channel like this. Uh, learn about it and really dive yourself in it and immerse yourself into the things that really catch your eye, right? The, what, what lights that fire inside of you. I think a lot of us don't really do that. And I know for myself, I didn't do that for the first, um, I would say, my last, after college, my first, let's say 10 years I, I didn't focus on what I really cared for or what it was that I really wanted to like dedicate my own time to uh, I was just kind of solving problems along the way solving problems solving problems solving problems and and putting out fires as they say and I didn't really focus on lighting up the fire within myself which is a great way to look at it <laughs> I just came up with that but I was just putting out fires and at the end of the day I still were, was left kind of empty and it's great and all. I think that every part of our lives has a purpose and there's a point for that. Like the reason why I'm here and I wouldn't take it back. But then you start evolving. So understand that where you're at right now, where you're supposed to be, you're going to get better. You're going to learn. You're going to evolve. But don't forget the biggest asset you have. Well, the biggest um, and most expensive asset you have is yourself. And, and the value that you bring to others and add to others around you will exponentially come back to you. In ways you have never thought um, and if you believe in that I feel like if you have that belief and you have that uh, passion life is just coming to you you don't really have to force anything everything comes to you at the right time and also if you're bored you're out there not doing nothing right now with the quarantine pick up a book go out there and get a book it's something about reading and just reading yourself anything you like anything it doesn't have to be a, a it could be a fictional story it could be um, uh, how to a cookbook something but pick up something for yourself and and give yourself that time of the day to read something and i, I guarantee you, your life will exponentially transform whether you see it now or you don't but it's gonna transform somehow some way it's gonna happen so yeah i'll leave you that with today don't forget see you guys tomorrow and uh stay safe Peace.